right. Um, okay, I see Suzanne. Uh, we don't run. Okay, looks like pretty much everybody is here. We are waiting for Shoba. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Okay, cool. Okay, now it's letting me choose, so that's good. Okay. All right, Shoba is also online. Okay, let's get started. Hi. Okay. So, Jyotra, are you there? Yes, please. Okay, cool. Um, okay, let's see. Okay, so what is the purpose of Sales Cloud, Jyotra? At a high level, if, like in one or two sentences, what is Sales Cloud according to you? All together. Yeah. See, if you ever want to, you know, try to summarize it simply, right? One way is to look at what how Salesforce describes it, right? So for service, it says, okay, manage customer service with accounts, contacts, cases, and more. Right, kind of gives you an idea of what it is about. So similarly, uh, you know, if it is about content, it's about CRM content management. If it is marketing, you know, sometimes it's a little more descriptive than other times, but it gives you an idea. So similarly, if you look at sales, it says it talks about your sales process, right? Now sales, as we saw yesterday, is one giant process, right? So um, can each of you name two components of the sales process? Name two things, uh, two processes within the broader sales process. Lead conversion. Okay. All right. So that's one. Okay. Maybe one one process per head. Okay. Lead conversion is one. Okay. Shoba, what's the next process? Yeah. Say that again. Campaigning. No, this is Jotsna. Jotsna, yeah. Okay. Campaign management. Okay. Cool. So we have two processes within campaign. One is at the campaign level and the other one is for the campaign members, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right, Shobha. Yeah, sir. What are the processes are there within the sales process? Uh, reports. Uh, report is not a process. Report is a functionality. Process means it has steps, right? So process is anything that has multiple steps. Let's say you're cooking something, then buying the vegetables, cleaning them, cutting them, you know, and cooking and, you know, serving them in a dish. All that is a serious sequence. You cannot, you know, go out of sequence too much for that, right? So same thing here. So process means it has some kind of a sequence. Sometimes it can branch out. So we talked about, like, you know, Josna said campaigns, um, Kevin said, Leads, Lead Suzanne, conversion. you suggest anything? What are the processes have you noticed yesterday? Opportunities. Opportunities, right? Yeah, opportunities is its own process. So how do you check if something has a predefined process built? You open one of the records. If you open the records and you see this path, this is called a path, right? Each of these is a chevron, by the way. OK, so if you hear the term Chevron, you know, it is nothing but, you know, just like literally the company Chevron, this is a Chevron. So each of these arrows is called a Chevron. OK, so each Chevron represents a step. OK. Each Chevron represents a step and when you have multiple steps, it's a process. Does that make sense? Okay. Multiple steps makes it a process. Okay, Kevin, can you think of any other process? 
Um, it might be confusing, but there is Process Builder, which can automate a lot of things. Right. So that's a tool, right? I'm talking about what are the typical sales processes, right? Now, let's uh, at a very high level look at the processes, right? And I know we, we touched upon this briefly. So lead, each of these is a process. So we are saying, hey, lead is not just one entity, but it's a process. Does it make sense? Yeah. So you want a lead to go from not contacted to contacted to... Yeah, you can converted. define your own process. Each company may do it differently, right? But you have a process, right? So opportunity is a process. And then we said campaign is the process. Campaign, both campaign members as well as a higher level campaign uh, is a process, right? Then we also have other processes. You know, you set up the products once, it's not so much a process, but you create an order. That's a process, right? You place an order, make the payment, you add items to the cart, you place an order, you make the, like you make the payment and then you submit it. So it's going through steps. So process is anything that goes through steps. Right. And the process can in turn have other processes. Now, how do you take an opportunity and go from opportunity to order? And why do you need a quote? Suzanne, why do you need a quote? When do you ask for a quote? Uh, uh, to have an idea of uh, the product, like yeah right uh, so like when it, we are yeah. planning to purchase something and we, we want to know the details of that product correct but you know for some products the price is fixed right so you don't go to an ice cream shop and says okay okay give me a cup of ice cream and what is the quote but let's say you're throwing a party and you want you know to feed 200 people you know 10 different types of ice creams you don't know the price or the price can change. They can be discounts and other variables that when the price is varying, that's when you ask for a quote, right? When there is no price variation, then you can, there are no different price books. You can simply go from, you know, opportunity. If you don't have a whole bunch of products, you don't have to configure them. So again, we're talking a little bit of business need, but that's what this whole module is about understanding the business process. The tools are again, consistent. Most of the tools that you use in sales cloud are also the tools that you use in service cloud. Okay. All right. Uh, so this is your price book or catalog you can call it a catalog but then you know this one has prices and you can change so okay let's talk about price book abhinav why do you need different price books different price books for a product yeah a, pri a product can have multiple price books and uh, and a product can be in multiple price books right and one price book can have multiple products in it but why do you need a price book is a question just to organize all the different prices but you just need one book. Oh, you need multiple. If you need one book, then you need zero books, right? Because you don't need to organize them. They are already in one big bucket, right? Uh, they are already in the products table. So the reason you need a price book is, okay, anybody wants to take a shot at this? Why do you need a price book? So that You're using different you prices book. for different yeah. customers? Exactly. So the prices could be different. Now prices could be different based on customers. What are the two types of customers we were selling our projectors to yesterday, Abhinav? The two types? Uh -huh. um, Public schools and? Just normal companies, small Private companies. schools. We are selling oh. to public schools and private schools, right? So it could be based on the type of the customer. Sometimes it's based on geography. Sometimes it is based on season. Like, you know, you may sell the same product, but for Thanksgiving, you may sell it at a different price, right? So you could also offer some bulk discounts. So, you know, like, so there's so many different reasons for you to have a price book. That way you are not, it's not a one price for everybody. Right? Unless question. you're an Apple store, you have to give discounts to people. Right? I have a question. Yeah. Would different currencies for different countries be one of these reasons, or is that something else? See, um, different currency is one way you can look at it. But, um, you know, with, with currency, there's also the challenge of exchange rate. Right? So that's another reason why you could have a different price book. 
Okay, if the prices are different, that's geography. You're calling it currency, but I even if I'm using the same currency in two different states of US, if the tax uh, taxation is different, I might just sell them differently. So naturally, okay. you know, uh, currency could also play a role. But yeah, that broadly, you know, gets covered under geography. But then when you're doing international, there's add, added, you know, uh, elements such as exchange rate, taxes, and so forth. So there are additional things, right? So to jump from opportunity to order, you sometimes need a quote. If if you are, you know, if the, there's no price variation, usually you just simply, you know, pay the price, or they'll bill you after the service is provided, right? Okay, so you guys good with this? So you understand the processes uh, uh, beneath the process. Right, so sales process is the umbrella, and then all of these are processes except for products and pricing. Right now, of course, you know, you might say, Okay, hey, when I create a price book in a company, you know, I cannot just create a price book and publish. Right, so if you create a price book, maybe your manager reviews it, maybe your lawyer reviews it. Right, maybe the marketing team and the sales team review and approve it. So, if there's some kind of an approval process, like the phrase itself says, then you have a process for generating and publishing a price book. Right, so that's that's a high level. Now, what we'll do is we'll spend a couple of minutes to look at the code as well. Okay, all right. So, yesterday we did a little bit of lead, we covered opportunity, we haven't quite touched order yet. We'll come to that. OK, now there are, you know, in a sales cloud, typically, you know, uh, sales cloud companies purchase if they want to offer specialized services, right? Um, or if they want to add more functionality, if there are specializations beyond specializations, right? So let's say your code power process is very complex, right? You're selling solar panels to government. It's not like a one step process, right? They may be, maybe there are lots of configurations, right? So I'll give you a quick example. Uh, where you might need a configuration. So if you purchase Dell laptop online, right? It's not a straightforward thing. If you don't know anything about computers, it's really hard to buy a Dell laptop, right? Uh, but they try to make it easy, right? If you want to buy a laptop, then you know you are branching out right here. So you say, hey, I want it for work. And then, you know, what, what are the different types of business computers you want, right? So there's the processor. So you need to know all of this. So this is in itself a separate module of Salesforce, okay? So that is called CPQ. CPQ is configure. That means you're configuring just like you configure your laptop or your solar panels. You're basically saying what you need, right? So this is configure plus price plus code. So instead of a simple code, now you have something fairly complex, right? Because just slapped us, just look at how many possible combinations. There are hundreds of combinations here, right? And we have only branched out into one of their product groups. Look at all the different products they have, right? Does that make sense? So because this is complicated, you need something more robust. So you, you use a CPQ module, right? Now, sometimes the orders are straightforward. Other times, you know, you're going back and forth and you need, you know, contracts and the contracts are for not only purchase of the product, let's say like solar panels, you cannot just buy them and you're done. You need to service them, right? On a periodic basis. So then you have a contract lifecycle management. Right. So if you look at a solar panel um, or if you buy any of the products, like even something as simple as, uh, you know, um, I would say a car car has on a periodic basis, you have, uh, you know, maintenance of the car. Right. Most companies uh, buy printers, those large printers that you see in offices. They all have some kind of a contract for not only sales, but also service. Right. And they say, OK, hey, this laptop is good for three years or, or this project printer is good for three years. And then after three years, they'll sell you a new one. 
right? Meanwhile, they'll maintain it. So that's what the contract lifecycle management is. So the CLM and the CPQ kind of go hand in hand uh, because uh, sometimes, right? Does that make sense? So CLM then can be its own huge process. So even though you're seeing order as a simple process, orders could be fairly complicated in itself. Okay. All right. So how many different clouds are mute? Okay, sorry. Okay. So how many different clouds are there? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Where am I? I don't know. Sales, sales service. Maybe finally cloud. No, stay here. You're logged into your account. I'm logged into my account. No, are you logged into my account? No, that's okay. Maybe that's why we are probably switched. It's okay. It's okay for now. All right. Don't don't log out. Can they hear you? Can you guys hear me now? Yes. Okay, cool. All right. So we were talking about the different types of clouds. What are the different types of clouds you've heard so far? Uh, can each of you tell me one cloud? What is the current cloud you're working on, Jotsna? Sales. Sales. Right? So we're working on sales. What else? Service cloud. Service cloud. Sales cloud, service cloud, okay. What else? Marketing. Sales console. Marketing cloud. Uh, sales console is a variation, right? It's just a faster way, you know, a simpler uh, pared down approach, right? It's like a variation of sales cloud. It's not its own unique cloud, okay? It's a type, it's a basically a sales cloud, but it's designed for um, a small group of people who, who do repeatedly the same kind of job. So it's kind of uh, streamlined, okay? But it's still a sales cloud, okay? Would you consider right. Chatter to be a cloud? No, Chatter is a module within the cloud. Cloud is a set of apps. No, that's fine. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Do you see too much back yes. here? Too much background? No. Suzanne, there's a little bit of background, but it's not too bad. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's see if this helps. Abhiram, are you logged in? So if I am using this, will you hear me? Okay. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Can you hear the group? Use a headphone so you can hear the group. No, dial back in. Okay, so we said we have a sales cloud and then somebody said marketing cloud. All right? Yeah. Okay. Up. Oh, sorry. We have marketing and then somebody said service, service. cloud. Right? This is the order in which. Now there's a fourth cloud, right? So uh, uh, sometimes, you know, buying a product is super easy, right? Other times, buying a product is its own experience. Right. So if you go to Amazon, you can imagine the kind of uh, complications Amazon has. Right. So let's take one quick look at Amazon. Even the Dell, Dell gives you, Dell should remind you of which module of Salesforce? CPQ. Right. So we talked about CPQ, which is your configure, pr pricing, and code. So I'll just say example ordering a custom laptop on dell.com okay and clm could be you know if you are usually when you're working with large organizations or governments then especially if you are selling products that need to be maintained right so for example this is i'll just put an example here uh, selling like if you've seen schools in US, especially in Simi Valley, uh, you know, most of them have solar panels, right? So that is not an easy sell, right? So you can think of this selling solar panels to government. You're selling and maintaining them, so you need a proper contract. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. So that's here. All right. Now, now what you will notice when you go to Amazon, for example, Let's see, right? So I have some products, right? And then, you know, how does it recommend these things? Right, so there's a recommendation engine and then it 
it keeps track of our order history, it handles returns, it handles shopping cart, it handles discounts, it handles a whole lot of things that are not strictly falling under any of these three modules, right? Because you already saw Amazon add on TV, right? And then you decided to go and buy. You don't need a quote in case of Amazon. And if you buy something, you're pretty much on your own unless you buy a service contract. But then the whole uh, you know, concept of buying a product itself is its own entity. And that is called a commerce cloud. So, OK, so you can think of e-commerce. Does it make sense? So these are the four Salesforce clouds. All right. So marketing cloud, you know, I'll give an example. Oh, give me uh, each of you. Give me one example. Let's start with Abhinav. What is marketing? Right. So you have advertisements and campaigns. Okay. All right. Uh, sales. Shobha. What is part of sales? Selling the products. Yeah. So what what is what are the key concepts? Like for example, you have quotes Quote and thing. order, right? Products, quotes, orders. Yeah. Quote. Cool. And then here your example could be a shopping cart, recommendations, and so forth. Does that make sense? And service. Okay, Kevin. What would be part of service? Cases. Like cases, right? If you call a customer service with some issues. At the cases, your service also could be maintenance, right? So these are all at the call center. Again, you could have a call center for sales. You could have a call center for service. That kind of gives you an idea that they, them, some of the modules can be common across. All right, does that make sense? So I want to make sure you have this broader context because 14% of the syllabus is primarily about understanding the business process and the tools across these clouds, you know, to a large extent are similar. Okay, so now we'll spend a few minutes looking at the codes. So I'll go back to my, oh, where was this? Okay. All right, can you guys see my screen all right? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, um, yeah, I'm in the sales module. Let's look at. We looked at the price books. Um, trying to see if this one has quotes on it. If not, let me just check. Okay. Quote is not enabled. Let me go in here and check if I can enable that. So I'm going to go to app manager because each of these is an app, right? So everything that you see here, see here, it says apps. In fact, if you click on view all, this is an app launcher, right? The nine circles that you see, that's an app launcher. And these are the apps. Apps are nothing but bundles of screens and each item is a screen, right? So if you look for quote here and if you don't find, that means it's not been added at all to this functionality. Right, it's not available at a period. But let's check, uh, see if there's a way for us to add it in. Okay, give me one second. Uh, you don't have to follow the steps right now because they're not fully baked. But I want to just spend a minute looking at this. Now, uh, meanwhile, can somebody tell me the difference between classic and lightning? Salesforce classic and Salesforce lightning. It's the whole yeah. thing. Right? Yeah. So the simplest way to think of it is the old version. The user interface and the functionality from a user's perspective might be different. Some features may be enabled, some features may be disabled, right? Uh, but the data is the same. The objects are the same. It's not like there are two different objects. Okay. So you have to remember that the objects and the data are the same, but the layers on top of it. That means the screens and the fields and the user interaction and the things that you can do, the buttons you can click, they vary. Okay. All right. So I'm in a sales app. Okay. This is my sales app. All right. Right now, if you notice here, these are the only ones that I've allowed. Right. Now, if you want to add more tabs, so let's go here 
and let's say I want to show you what assets mean as well. Can you guys actually let's let's follow along. OK, do you guys know how to go to app manager? Go to app manager, please. So just search for app and then click on app manager. Now, what's the difference between an app manager and an app exchange marketplace, Kevin? App manager sounds like it's working with the apps that you have. App exchange right. marketplace would be searching online to find more apps that other people have built. Fantastic. All right. Did everybody hear that? Cool. Yeah. All right. So let's go to app manager. And then I uh, want to uh, let me know if you are able to find uh, sales. Make sure you pick sales lightning and not sales classic. So go to app manager and look for sales. Look for sales. Scroll down. Your scrolls are probably down. Lightning. 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 We need to lightning. open app manager in which model? OK, so you're still in lightning. You're in lightning. Let me start over. OK, oh, so let's say you're in this main application, right? This is the user end of the application. So we want to go to the administrator end. So click on setup and that will open up a new tab on your browser. Let me know when you're there. OK, did you open a new tab? Open. Yeah, OK, yeah. so now click on search for app here and click on app manager. OK. OK. Did you find it? Yeah, it's, a, it's taking a little time. <laughs> OK. OK. All right. And then uh, if you go to, you know, these are all uh, these are organized, you know, alphabetically. Uh, you started alphabetically rather. So you go go to say is lightning sales lightning and then go all the way to the end and click on one second let me just see no. lightning experience app manager okay so this is visible in lightning exchange okay so i'm gonna go to sales lightning and then go towards the end here make sure you pick the right one when you hover over it it highlights the entire cell or row and click on edit. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm clicking the lightning app builder. In one second. OK, so did it open uh, the same thing for you? You are in lightning app builder. Yeah, yeah. so that's yes. fine. Go to navigation items. Navigation items. OK, and then I'm going to add a bunch of things. So I'm going to add assets. OK. Um, CMS is for content editor. For now, I'm going to skip CMS. We'll come back to that later. See, I have contracts. Uh, I'm also going to go ahead and add email templates. We'll touch, touch upon that briefly. Let me add images as well. I want to add Salesforce knowledge, but we'll cover that knowledge later on. So don't add knowledge just yet. And then orders, right? I'm trying to add everything that's relevant for my uh, sales organization, right? So, so far, what did I add? I added assets, contracts, email templates, images, orders. Did you guys do all of that? Yeah, cool. And then let's see uh, what else is important. Price books is important, so I'm going to add price books. Products is important. What else? Uh, that's basically it. OK, while we are here, I'm going to just throw in the recycle bin also. So all right, let me know if everybody added what I added. One answer. OK, uh, OK. All right, guys, did you add everything? Yeah. Assets, okay. contracts, email templates, images, orders, products, price books, and recycle bin. Yeah. Correct. Products, price book, and recycle bin. Now, if you add something by mistake, you can always remove it. Okay. All right. Click on save. 
and you're all set basically. Okay, so now I can go back here. What we need to add? Assets? Uh, Kevin, can you just read Assets, that? contracts, email templates, images, orders, products, price books, and recycle bin. And you will see them here also, uh, Joseph. So mm -hmm. if for some reason you just refresh this. Yes, so my, my system is taking slow. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. And as we look at each item, you leave the app uh, that uh, uh, tab open. Uh, okay. That way, you know, if you need to add anything, you can quickly add. All you have to do is just refresh the view. Okay. okay. Lead it loudly so people can hear you. Can they hear you? Um, I'll just type in the chat. So, are you are you on mute? Yeah, because you talking. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. So, Kevin, do you see your items? See, I see mine here. Yeah. Okay. If you go to more, actually, we started with product. Uh, products was already there, so I added price books, contracts, email templates, images, orders, and recycled it. It's in the okay. chat now. Perfect. Okay, I'm trying to see if we already have. I didn't find any quotes there, correct? I don't think I found quotes. So I looked up quotes. You have to enable them first. Right. Okay, so let's do that. It's in okay. the quick find. Right. So you notice that it's still in the sales module. So that's a good sign, right? So I'm going to go to sales and see what I can find here. So I'm, I'm back on the admin tab. Okay, I just clicked on sales and there are quite a few settings that you can do here. Actually, it would be good for everybody to take a second to look at these. Okay, I haven't fully explored these uh, recently, but we can we can review it together. Okay, all right guys, do you see here? These are just your basic elements of sales. You have your accounts, your contacts, opportunities. Contract is right here, but if you're using a module like CLM, then it will be much more complex. Okay, Abir, are you searching and looking at those items? Okay, all right. Did everybody search for sales and go to this feature settings? And then if you go to quotes, you have quote setting. Okay, can everybody go to quote setting for a second? And now what you need to do is you need to enable this item. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click on enable. All right, let me make sure first everybody is everybody able to find code. You can either search for code directly or go to the sales uh, within feature setting and then you should find focus opportunities. Um, opportunity setting is also there. That's already enabled, but you can add more more elements to it. We'll cover those later. Right now, all I need you to do is go to. Uh, it's asking for page layout selection. Okay, let me go through the steps first. Okay, all right. So now, first thing is you want to enable it. Go ahead and enable. Enable code setting. And then it's basically asking you, so what do you want to do is you want to make sure you read this. I want everybody to take a second to read it. Search for code. Now, even within sales, you have scrolled down. OK, so now what we can do is uh, select the page layouts that should have the quote related list. So you guys know what a related list is. See, if I go to contacts, right? If I go to contact and open one of the contacts, this contact, right, Abigogo, is related to, for example, this campaign is related to this account, right? So similarly, if you go to, let's say, lead, right? A lead will have elements that it's related to. So one object may be related to other objects. Okay. In case of lead, it's by itself because that's at the gate. And once you convert it, it translates. So that's why lead doesn't have related items. But if you pick anything else, like account has related items. Okay. So accounts has contacts. It has opportunities, it has cases, notes, partners, so it can have a whole bunch of related items. So that's what this is. Okay, so it's basically asking where do you want quotes, 
right? So we because we are working on sales, I'm going to bo select both the opportunity sales layout and just the opportunity layout. OK, and then click on save. OK. All right, so now let's go to our sales module and go to opportunities. And if you open an opportunity, and where is the related list? Yeah, so for opportunity related list is on the right hand side. Here I should be able to see quotes. Right? OK, so let me know if you, everybody has been able to enable and do, do you guys see up quotes under your opportunities? Go to opportunities. Open one of the existing opportunity and under the related, see if you have quote. You see a quote? No. No, go to opportunity. Yeah, I'm seeing it at the bottom. Okay. So maybe you did not enable it. I not go back and enable it. You need to select. Remember we talked about selecting. Don't randomly select. I want to select sales and offer regular opportunity. Yes. OK, and then click on save. And then you're done. Now go back and refresh that window. Refresh the page. You should now see it. OK. Yeah. Okay. So you go to opportunity, open one of the existing opportunity, and at the very bottom, do you see it? Still don't see quotes. Okay, who else is not able to see it? Abhiram couldn't see it. Did you enable it? I'm also unable to see. Okay, did you enable it? Yeah. Okay. I couldn't enable it. Say that again. I could not uh, enable, did it. enable it. Okay, all right, guys. So it looks like uh, for some reason for Abhiram, it did not enable. Uh, so let's check again. Just can everybody go to the admin tab? And go to quote and go to quote settings. If you see disable, that means what? Yeah, so that's fine. That's fine. Sometimes if it doesn't go through, right? Um, you just have to go back and double check. Okay, so can I have everybody go there? Go to your admin panel and search for quote, go to quote settings and check if it is enabled. If it is enabled, then it will say, hey, do you want to disable it? Okay. Now, yeah, what is, is it? It is enabled. Does it say enable or disable? Yeah, it says disable means I have already enabled it. You already have it. If you already have it, all you have to do is come back to your application screen. So this is your admin screen and your application screen. Come to your application tab and just refresh your application. OK, then go to opportunity. Open one of the just refresh the page, go to opportunity and at the bottom on the right hand side, under activity, you should be able to see quotes because that's the related list is right here. Okay, does everybody see it? Yeah. Now, can I have uh, those of you see it? Go ahead and create a quote. Pick an existing opportunity yeah. or the opportunity that you generated yesterday. Okay, how about you, Suzanne? Now I can see the quote. Yeah. yeah. Do you see it, uh, Jyotina? Yeah, yes, I can see. Okay, uh, Shoba. Yeah, I can see. Okay, cool. All right, so now everybody can see it. Now, first of what I want you to do is just to look at your uh, account. Okay, so let's say you are selling them, I don't know, microwaves, right? Or whatever you're trying to sell them. Uh, you can go to go here and you can create a new quote. Now, of course, what is what does quote depend on? Quote quote needs two things. What are the two things quote needs? No, right. what what information will you have for a quote in a quote? Oh, and you'll just say price, $50, and that's it. Mm, what is a quote product. for? 
does the customer want price uh, dollars or what do they want discount they want discount a but they product. want more importantly they want a product or a service right so your quote has to have your quote you're providing a quote to sell a product but in order to make the deal sweeter you are changing the price you're giving discounts or offers or sometimes you say okay hey you only get a discount if you buy two uh, items right like if you go to sam's club they are offering a hundred dollar discount on fridges but you have to buy two of them so i don't know who would buy two fridges but that's the kind of you know deal companies come out with all right now uh, for those of you who are in the us if you try to place an order and i think even in india right if you try to place an order at costco for same day delivery costco is not the one processing the order who's processing the order which company is processing the order huh? who's processing are you and is it question? salesforce nope Salesforce may be the underlying software. I'm asking which company is processing it. If you try the to place an order, company. the fridge company. No, no, I'm not talking fridge anymore. I'm just talking about you know if you go to Costco and do same day delivery, let's say grocery, right? And if you do same day UPS. delivery, yes. Warehouse no. people. No, warehouse people are not going to leave the warehouse. So what they have instead is they have partnered with another company called um, Instacart. Okay, and Instacart person actually what they do is whatever products you pick, just like you, they'll go take your list, and they'll go bring the products and drop them in front of your door. Okay, now Instacart's main thing is again, you know, so Instacart is offering. Okay, hey, these are all the products that have deals. This is what you have in your cart, and this is how much the service charge is, and all of those things, right? What are the frequently purchased items and everything? So it is giving you all of these things. The focus here is on the act of purchasing, making it as easy as possible for you, right? So that one is. Um, one second, somebody was just pinging. All right, so what is Instacart? Let's say Instacart were built on Salesforce. Which of the four clouds do you think it's primarily leveraging? Sounds like commerce. Yeah. Um, right, so that's what it is. Right, okay. Again, you know, I just want to make sure you have some real world context to what we're doing. And the best thing is, you know, a lot of the stuff that Salesforce does, we use it as a consumer without even realizing, you know, what's behind the scenes. Okay. All right. So now let me go back. Give me one second. I think. All right. Me, while I'm waiting, I want everybody to go ahead and create a quote. Uh, try to pick a product that you added yesterday. Where? Right. Add everything you can. That way, you at least learn. You know what is involved in it. We'll talk about it. I want you to take a shot at it, and then I'll help you. Does anybody know Shravani? Shravani. Okay. So you probably know her. Jyotsha? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right, we will add her to the group. And then uh, how do I add her? So just to add. OK, I want her to add her to the group also. I don't know how to add her. Go back. No. What am I doing? Just add her. Where is she? OK. All right, and then uh, Jotsna, if I can request either Jotsna or uh, Shoba to talk to Shravani and help her set up with the Salesforce, just the initial setup. Yeah, is that good? Oh, okay. Okay. Right. Of course, if you need any help, you can talk to me or Kevin. Cool. All right. Chase uh... uh, actually. All right. No, the camera is on her end. Okay, Shravani, uh, we are sharing our screen. Hey. Okay. 
Hey, right, Tulsi. I see Naveen there. Hello, Naveen. Hey, hey, good man. Hey, listen. Thanks. Uh, we, we'll chat some more. Of course, you're most welcome. So we only have about 20 minutes for today. But what we'll do is uh, we, let her observe what we're doing. And then uh, either uh, Shobha from my class or Dosna will uh, connect with Shravani and help her set up. Okay, okay sure. Thanks, Tulsi. Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. So meanwhile, if you have a, yeah, you can go ahead and then just stop. So, hi. Alrighty, guys. So let's go ahead and create a course that we were talking about. Okay. So everybody has the code enabled. Okay. Everybody has a code enabled. Now let's go ahead and create a code. So everybody knows which product or which opportunity they're creating it for. Correct. Now, let me take before I add a quote. What I want to do is quote is for a product. I want to see if I have any products also associated with this. Right right now, I don't have any products associated with it, but I do have an amount of $10,000 for my opportunity. OK, typically what happens is your opportunity amount is coming from your quotes. OK, you can have one or uh, multiple quotes and then it picks from whichever one you identify as primary. So Abhiram was asking what is syncing? So sync when you sync it basically syncs the amount with your uh, primary quote. We'll, we'll talk about that in a second. So is everybody on the opportunity page at the details of the activity level? Yeah, and then go to quote on the right hand side and click on new quote. OK, so this is a quote. So let's say we are selling them microwaves. I, I think yesterday I was selling projectors. I'll just keep it consistent. Projector P2. OK, and I want to sell this is for IS. Uh, I'll say, you know, QT. Yeah, it's a good price to have a good price. Work. OK, so expiration date. Now the quotes, you know, just like any kind of discount uh, have an expiration date. So and the re why do you think people, companies have a discount uh, expiration on discounts and orders uh, and quotes? You want them to buy it quickly. Right. Exactly right. If they'll say they'll buy sometime in the future, that's not going to uh, help, right? OK, you can have a status for your um, quote. Now, if I see a status and I see a sequence, right? Then what am I seeing here? Shobha? If I have a sequence of steps, what is it called? Uh, it maybe needs to review. Uh, no, it's called a process, right? So see a quote, right? A quote. Yeah, you were saying, you know, what's the next step? Right. So from draft, I can go to needs review or in review and so forth. Right. But when you see the steps, then you know it's a process. And if you want to change it, yesterday we talked about where we can go and change it. So Jotsna, where would we go to change this? Abhina, where would we go? Yeah. But where do you change the values, right? So you go to object manager, right? And let me bring this out here. So uh, just as, as a quick example, so just so we know what we are doing, we are trying to add a quote, but we saw that it has statuses that I don't need. It may be, you know, I don't need um, needs review, in review. So I'll just say I'll go from draft to in review to approve. OK, let's say I don't need presented, accepted, denied and so forth. So I want to simplify this. I want to make it like a three step process. So how would I do this? Right. So what I'm going to do is can everybody go to object manager tab? Uh, escape this window. So if you started a code, just cancel out of it. Uh, so you want to go here, go to object manager. And search for a code. OK. So as you can see here, a code can have multiple code line items. Go to object manager. Under setup. And then search for code, please. Search. 
there are like how many I uh, okay just as a quick uh, you know so you get a sense of how many items are there in say how many objects are there in Salesforce can somebody tell me roughly how many items uh, objects are there 400 is Abhinam's guess. So what you do There's is... There's a lot if you, of them starting with A. <laughs> yeah. See, again, you know, the number of objects you have depends on your license, what else you have, uh, you know, is enabled for you through the license. Right now, I see 89 items. Right? Mine not 52 not plus. 52 plus, but if you scroll down, it will tell you what it is. 52 is basically on one screen full. That's what it means. 60. Okay. okay. Right, so it depends on what you enabled and so forth. So for now, you know, just let's go to quote. Can everybody go to quote in the object manager and then let's edit it. So open quote and then go to fields and relationships, please. And what is it that we want to change? Does somebody remember what we wanted to change? Status, status right? So we want to change the status of the quote. Status values is what we want to change. Yeah, so I go to quote. Fields and relationships, and let me search for status. See, this is status here, and I'm going to click on it, and I can see a whole bunch of values, right? So all I want to do is I want to basically deactivate a bunch of them. So it will say, hey, are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Now, if I deactivate, is that final? Can all right. I'm only getting the option to replace. Um, you just click on it rather than um, clicking on the right hand side. Just click on the hyperlink itself. Okay, let me make sure if, if everybody's on the same page. Is everybody on object right. manager where you're able to find your quote? Status. Go to object manager oh. and find quote. Oh, I found it. Yeah, so click on quote and then go to fields and relationships. Shobha and Jotsna, are you following along? Yeah. And, yes. Okay, so then search for status and then click on status. I was expecting an edit to come out of the arrow on the right. Yeah, I saw that too. So I'll take a look at that and see what's going on there. So here, what I'm going to do is I want to deactivate this. Are you sure? Okay, so this is time the screen refresh, so that's good. Um, so whatever I deactivate, the inactive values are here, right? So it is draft, and I want to deactivate uh, in review. So all I want is draft, uh, in review, approved or rejected. Everything else I want to just deactivate. I want to just keep the list simple. Can everybody do that, please? Keep draft. Keep approved and denied. Uh, okay. Draft and then, approved and what? Yeah, except these four. And then let's reorder them. It also tells you which that is, uh, you know, um, by default. So your default status is draft. So I'm going to change in review. I'm going to move them up. Thank you, Kevin. So draft, in review, approve, deny. Okay. And I can click on, you can change the, the default value if you want. If you want them to be organized mm -hmm. alphabetically, regardless of the order in which you show, they'll be in alphabetical order. But something that's a process, there's no point in showing them in alphabetical order. Right? Okay. So click on save and you have the list ready. Okay, now if you go back here and start a new quote. I have Kevin. a couple of questions. Sure. What's the yeah. difference between approved and accepted? And also what's the difference between denied and that's rejected? A, that's, a, that's the reason why we remove this. Now, re remember, you know, it, uh, we are talking about sending a quote and sometimes they go back and forth. And also the quote could be, you know, you are internally getting it reviewed and approved, not just by the customer, right? So sometimes what you could do is you, you start it out 
and then you send it to your manager for approval who may approve or deny it. And if the manager approves and denies, uh, let's say the manager approves it, then you present it to the customer who then accepts it. All right. So there's a whole lot of activity that could go on. So that's why you could keep it simple or complex. But a quote, you know, because it involves products and pricing, and sometimes you're not allowed to sell certain products to certain, like for example, there are products that are only available in wholesale, right? So things like that, they are not available for retail customers, right? So you want to just uh, make sure that you are protecting it, and that's why you know there's a whole process around it. Okay, so in this case, internally your your manager is approving and denying this, and then the customer once you present it to the customer, they can accept or reject. So again, you know you can have as many as it makes sense for you. I just wanted to show this so that you know how it uh, how this works. Okay. All right. So let's go back here. Go to quote. All right. Um, and let me just pick an expiration date and say, okay, you have to buy till the end of the month. Uh, this is the first one, so this thing doesn't make sense. And the quote, I can say Q1. Uh, and um, let's say this is for Indian sweets and spices for Project LP3. Okay, so something something simple and that I'll remember what it is and I can even throw that in the description. Okay. okay, now there are two aspects to it. So one is whatever you populate here and then if you guys remember quote also had a quote template. So if you search for the quote object, uh, there's a quote line item, but if you went to setup and search for a quote, Apart from code setting, there are also code templates. So we'll talk about the templates in a second. Okay. All right. So now, what is this? Why is this item in uh, gray? Is it a name of a field? Uh, you know, quote information totals are these fields? They're more like groups of fields. If they are fields, they should hold information. No, they are just groups of information, right? It's a section, right? So you cannot put anything right here. Section is simply a group of fields, right? Similarly, total has what? It has discount, it has tax, it has grand total and so forth. Yes? Okay. Now, what else do you have? You have who you're preparing for, their email address and so forth. Let's say you want to build to, and let's say you build it to the same address. You can have that information. Ship to, maybe they're paying electronically, so you don't need to send it to their home address. If you need to, you have build to and ship to. So, does everybody understand the difference between build to and ship to? Yeah. Right? So, anybody who sent a Christmas gift to their family, um, you know, would know that, okay, hey, you want to maybe ship it to your nephew but uh, ship it to your nephew but bill it to you right it would be unfair to ship it to yourself and bill it to them yeah so that's the difference right so who pays and who gets sometimes it's the same party but other times it can be a different party as well all right so you have everything down yeah did everybody populate a quote now the one thing that our quote is missing is what A quote is missing the price and the product, right? Those are the two things it's missing, price and product information, because we have not associated any price to this opportunity. We have not handled that piece of the functionality yet. Okay, um, but uh, for now, let's uh, march on. So you would actually indicate your total here, depending on the products and the discount, taxes, shipping and handling, right? So standard fare, so I'll click on save. Okay, so now what you have is you have a quote. Can an opportunity have more than one quote? Yes. Right? Yes. So here I can basically go in and add a new quote. So I'll just say, uh, 
So a court could be somebody, you know, people are always going back and forth. They say, you know what, I want this configuration. Maybe I want, you know, so like, for example, when I ordered solar panels, I, I had a choice of either taking 12 panels or 24 panels, right? And there were two different varieties. Uh, so initially I said I want 12 panels and then I said, you know, maybe I can do 24. So I asked them to give me code for both so I can tell the difference. Right? So that's when you need a separate code. So when you're giving it the difference between two codes is the only two things you can change. Really, actually, there are three things you can change in a code, right? You can change the products, you can change the price. And you can change the quantity. They might say, OK, hey, give me the difference between, you know, uh, you know, if I buy 12 versus 24, what's the difference? Can I buy 18? You know, customers ask all sorts of questions. So, you know, you want to figure out how much flexibility you want to give and how much is standardized. OK. So these three together kind of indicate the product, the price and the quantity. All of these elements go into your code. OK. All right, so you have a basic understanding of what a quote is. The things that I said it's missing is, of course, the product and the quantity. We'll come back to that. So now I have two different quotes. OK. Let me see if I can edit it. OK, it's not able to sync right now. We'll come back to that. OK, so then we ha it's about 9 o'clock, so I want to wrap it up in five minutes. But uh, before that, what I want to do is maybe just talk briefly about a code template, right? Now, you can do whatever you want in Salesforce, right? Will it reach your customer? You can design, let's say, a really good code or, you know, two, three different types of codes, but you have to give it to your customer, right? You have to generate a code. That's what code generation is. Right? Typically, you know, these days you get a code in the email, right? So what they do is basically once you have a code, you want to generate it. And if you want to generate a code, you have to, you know, pick one or more templates. So can everybody go to App Manager for a second, search for code, and go to code templates. So code template is simply, you know, how you want to specify the information. There's a standard template that you can edit or you can clone and you can make new ones. So for, for the time being, let's not make any changes to the standard template. We can clone it, okay? So if you add new and you can use the existing template as a basis, and then you can put your names and say, okay, this is a custom code, right? Or you can say, hey, for my business users, I have one quote for my government because I want to indicate all the terms and conditions, right? So that's a different quote. So I'll say this is a government quote, and then for private organizations, you have a different quote template. Does that make sense? So the terms and conditions, the pricing, the discount, all those things could be different. Okay, so what am I looking here? Can somebody take two minutes, review this, and tell me what, what am I seeing here? Go ahead. Can everybody first create a code template? Make a new code template, Abhiram? Okay. Is everybody on the same page as I am? Yeah. Yes. Yeah? Okay. Yes. Now, many times, you know, when you are come when you come across new functionality, and it's very likely you'll come across new functionality because Salesforce is, has three releases every year. OK, so they're constantly adding new stuff. So, you know, there are multiple ways of learning about the new stuff. But usually when you're trying to build something, that's when you learn the most. Right. So my goal is for two weeks, uh, this week and next week, we'll basically learn all the concepts. And then the third week will be primarily application. We'll take a case study and we'll slowly start building one layer at a time. So that way you can see all the pieces come together. It could be a hospital project or a school project, or we can even build something for like, you know, um, um, a restaurant or basically any, any, you know, solar city. You can pick a pro uh, company. We'll all agree on one or two, and then we'll build out the functionality. So just like I think initially we built out an app for the hospital management system that was quick and dirty, so we can build out something elaborate. Okay, all right. So uh, back to code template. Is everybody on the code template? Did you create? Uh, did you make a new code template? Yeah. Okay. Now if you see the code. 
court has what are the pieces of information a court has court has court information it has account information so if you click on each of these tabs it will basically what is changing what is changing guys the tabs so see when you right so all the pieces of information all the pieces of data is changing right a code data is different from opportunity data so what you can do is you can add a section so right now this is the template right so right now it is a header right the title is hidden but you can activate it you say okay you know what i want to show the title okay and you can make it one column or two column does it make sense so you can add information here so here, let's say at the very top, I want to put account name. So I can put account name on one end, and then I want to put the court number. Let me see if I have a court number. I have a court name. Court number is already somewhere else on this, but let's say I want to put the name of the court. Okay, so how did I do that? So I basically clicked on this section properties. Click on the section properties and hide it so that way it's visible. So now you're trying to customize a template. So think of it as a Word document, right? So this is your template. And then I'll, I'll just pull up a sample code. Okay. Uh, sample code. I think I have one in my emails too. I can pull that up. Um, this, see, this is a typical sample. You may have seen it, you know, if you're buying anything, uh, you will see it. Right. So here, if you notice, OK, can you guys still see my screen? OK, so here I'm just opening up one of the codes. Uh, all right, not that. OK, so for now, let me just. Open image and new tab. Open image and new tab. Thank you, Kevin. All right, let me see. If I can zoom see. in. Okay. OK, so here if you see proposal and quote, what's the difference? That's quote the is a final one. Uh, not necessarily. Uh, proposal is a quote. They're used interchangeably. OK, uh, legally there may be some nuance, but uh, as far as Salesforce is concerned, a quote and a proposal are the same, right? Um, and then here you have your company name, your company logo. So right now, for example, if my template is missing a logo, I can add an image. So if I have one of the fields that tracks the image, I can add it here. OK, uh, let's see. And then what are these? There has, there's a description section and then it breaks down additional details. These are the terms and conditions and signature, right? So this is a very simple proposal and it has warranty and terms information. So similarly, mine has organization information, who I'm sending it to, their address information. It has a list of products, so if I have multiple line items, uh, it will keep adding those line items. It will say, hey, what's the list price, the sales price, the quantity, discount, total price. Now, if you want to add, let's say, um, uh, apart from discount, if you want to add shipping and pricing, you could also go ahead and add that. OK, so we can go to court and see if such a such a piece of information is there. Otherwise, we we'll need to go ahead and add that uh, field to this object first. OK, so this is your footer and in your footer, let's say you want to keep track of the opportunity. So I want to see if there's an opportunity number. Or an order number is here, so I'm just going to pick order number. OK, so you can have a, you know information depending on what is relevant for your organization and you can make up your own template. OK, so here I can add additional fields as well. I have a line item description modified by if I want to indicate product code, I can increase it, add the product code and I can change it. So that way I can see what product I'm setting. Does that make sense? So now product code is added. So you can modify this to your heart's content and you know you can figure out right now this is two columns you can make it one column if it makes sense but ship two and build two it's a good idea for them to be two columns right and you can if you want to show the header you can show it 
right? So if you unhide the title, then the title will show on the quote itself. Anything gray will not show. See here, title is hidden. You can simply click here and unhide it. If you want to add more fields, you can add more fields. If you want to get rid of an entire section, you simply have to click here and it will remove all the line items. OK, so let's say you make a mistake and you remove the address. OK, what do you do? Hit undo. <laughs> you can hit undo. OK, that's one way to do it. Yeah, but you could also, for example, go back and see. Let me just um, and uh, remove this and then address belongs to, let's say, the account. OK, then I can go back and see. All right, I see address. Um, so maybe I want to add a section. Right, so I want to add a section. Here. Right, and this section is two columns and the title is this is a custom address section. See here, I can add a custom address section. That's a custom address section. And then I can have shipping address and billing address because address belongs to account. Now, uh, what's the difference between an account and a contact, uh, Jotsna? Uh, account means the total, it belongs to an account, like particular person details only. Yeah, see, account is like a building or a company, and a contact is a, a person who works at that company. That's a simple way of remembering it. Okay, all right. I have billing address. I want to see if there's a shipping address on the shipping address is here. Make sense? And if you want to move things around, you can move it, right? So you can fully customize this template. And once you customize it, you can click on save, and now you have two templates. And the custom template needs to be activated. That way you can actually use them in your quotes. Okay. All right, uh, it's 9, 10 now. I'll wrap up. I just want to see if there's a quick way for me to associate it here. Otherwise, we'll pick it up tomorrow. All right, so let's uh, take one second to recap. We talked about the broader sales process. We focused a little more on the court uh, process, and we also reviewed the concepts of uh, sales uh, cloud in general. So we reviewed those. What other aspects did we cover today? Earlier, our uh, sales app was missing some objects, so we went into the uh, app and app manager, and we added a few navigation items, right? So you can you can continuously change, and if you are an administrator or a developer, you're constantly toggling between this screen and the screen, right? You can think of this as a front end UI, and this is your setup environment, right? This has setup as well as object manager information. Right, so this is for end users. This is for administrators. OK, all right, so that's a quick context. And then uh, Shravani, we, uh, so we'll, we'll uh, you know, uh, connect with you later. Uh, you can also talk to your friend Jyotsna and get some you know, basic setup ready. And then our, all our, our classes are, what we're trying to do is for these three weeks, we're doing some intensive program every day from like uh, 8 to 9, 10, like for about 60, 70 minutes, we uh, are working through all the key topics necessary for Salesforce administration. Okay. All right. Later on, if you have any questions, you can contact me as well. Yeah, Navin should have Leela's number and my number. Okay, all right. You guys are good? Pretty yeah. good. Okay, yeah. all right. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. All right. Take care, guys. Bye.